Chrissy here with popculturemadness.com and concertblogger.com with Robert DeLong. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so how are you enjoying Firefly? It's looking a little ringy and wet out here. Well, that's cool. I mean, I literally just got here about half an hour ago, but uh, yeah, at least it's warm. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. So what can we be expecting from your performance this afternoon? Uh, I mean, yeah, if, 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 if you don't know much about what I do, it's, it's kind of a weird uh, electronic kind of indie hybrid thing, and I, I basically run around on stage and I play everything from drum set to, uh, you know, vocals, and then I have, like, uh, you know, different uh, MIDI controllers like keyboards, but also, like, game controllers like joysticks. And That's what I think is so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wild. It's pretty pretty high energy and it's continuous, you know, and it's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's unique, and, like, I love the, the freshness of everything is so cool. How important is that for you to, you know, as an artist to keep that unique quality? Um, I mean, I don't know. It's uh, To me, it's just, you know, I, I, I was just experimenting, experimenting around with stuff and this is kind of what came out and I think it's cool that, uh, you know, it's, it's different and unique and, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 fun. <laughs> so you're still on the road behind just movement. How happy are you with the feedback that it's been getting? It's cool. I mean, it's it's cool to see people responding to it, and you know, it's cool playing shows and having people know the lyrics and stuff like that. I don't know it's pretty wild. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been busy. A lot of travel. <laughs> so what's the dynamic like between switching, you know, with these big festival environments to like smaller, like I don't know, more intimate, like a club setting? I'm sure the vibe is different on stage. Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, playing for the, the the club things is always fun because it's intimate and everyone can see exactly what I'm doing. And you know, and, and usually it's like it's pretty rowdy. But um, you know, I love playing for the the festivals because it's it's a cool way to kind of introduce myself to people. You know, that are you know maybe just saw that like oh this is on my schedule, so you know I'm, I'm going to check it out. Um, but it's cool. I mean, uh, the cool thing about festivals is. It, it, it means the sound is always consistently, you know, huge and good, and we always, you know, we, we, we know we can kind of destroy that way, and that's cool because it's. I think that's so important to the show because it's, you know, it's obviously, it, it's so dependent on that. So yeah, and it's fun. Oh, absolutely. I mean, sometimes I think with with EDM in general, we're used to kind of seeing the guy behind the board and like that's it. You know, I mean, what's so cool is like seeing that movement, that interaction, and everything. I think that's so awesome. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, that was kind of the. The whole reason I kind of designed my setup this way is just this, you know, it was all about to me trying to find a way to make it visually impactful as an electronic performer, which is, you know, so much of the time it's hard to tell what anybody's doing up there, which is, you know, whatever, it's cool, but... <laughs> yeah, it's like, what is he doing back there? I don't know. <laughs> so, with Just Moving, can you take me in the studio and tell me maybe about one track in particular and what your mindset was like? Sure. Um, I mean, uh, I think a, a kind of a strange example of a track would be Global Concepts, which is kind of the current single right now. Um, that was a, uh, a track where I locked myself in my closet. Uh, I had just moved to a new place, so I didn't have a studio set up. So I locked myself in my closet with a timbali and a microphone and my computer, and uh, four hours later, that was the tune that came out. So, uh, I mean, that's kind of the way a lot of these songs are. They're just, uh, you know, something that might have started as a guitar fragment, you know, me playing guitar and singing over it. And then, you know, I just uh, sat down for a few hours with headphones or whatever. And then, you know, later on, I went back and spent some time, you know, polishing it and mixing it and all that. But, yeah, everything's kind of a, you know, the whole process is just sort of an evolution. It starts, the track starts somewhere with some basic idea and then, you know, just hours and hours of chiseling away at it. So, what was that pivotal music moment that occurred in your life that made you decide that you had to pursue that art form for a career? You know, I, I don't know if there's anything specific. It was, uh, I mean, my dad was a drummer, so I always just grew up around music, and that, you know, it's just kind of ingrained in me. And it was sometime during high school I realized it was the only thing I was uh, probably good enough and interested enough in to uh, pursue as a career, so that's what I did. <laughs> so do you have a dream artist you'd like to share a stage with or a festival appearance with? I mean, uh, sort of Sort of uh, my go-to answer is always, uh, is always, you know, Radiohead, Tom York. I mean, obviously I do a completely different thing, but um, yeah, and my, my other go-to answer would be Brian Eno, though he doesn't really perform necessarily anymore, but... <laughs> You know, it's so funny though, because even though there are you know differences within the music at these big festivals, you see so much genre diversity, and I, I think that's awesome because it doesn't matter what you're a fan of anymore. Like everyone's coming together for one purpose. Yeah, I know, and I love that, and I think that you know, I think that in the modern age, it's really cool how people are. You know, there's kind of genre fluidity. Anybody can be in any, anything. You know, exactly, and I think that you know, I think that's why you know what I do works 
better now than I would have, you know, five years ago. So. Absolutely. So what are your plans for the rest of the summer and the fall? Um, I mean, it's a lot of touring. I got uh, a lot of shows coming up, uh, you know, uh, kind of riding out the end of the, the festival season here in uh, America. And then I'm also going to Australia in July. And uh, then, yeah, then I'm going to be just pretty much on the road until December. I'll, I have, uh, I'll have a couple tours coming up in the fall. So, yeah. Madness. That's exciting. You're gonna be a road warrior by the time this is done. Oh yeah, no. This uh, this last week has been crazy. I've uh, flew in from France, played a show that night, played a show the next night, and then drove here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for taking a few minutes out to speak with me. I appreciate it. Is there any comments you'd like to share with our site visitors? Just uh, you know, keep listening. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs>